Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Also, check out our podcasts wherever you listen to podcasts. Apple, Google, Spotify, we should be there. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk heavyweight boxing. Let's talk the big series of fights. Tyson Fury, the lineal, the WBC, against Anthony Joshua, practically everything else. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, first, let me give a shout out to uh, the individual who posted uh, Lawrence O'Coley's comments after the fight, his big win, his acquisition of the Cruiserweight title. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, greatly appreciate it. I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see on your Twitter account your posting of the fight, right? In the Lawrence O'Coley post-fight video, I have a link to the Twitter account I'm talking about, to the individual I'm talking about. Greatly appreciate it. Let me just point out that in the comments, O'Coley beat my prediction. Congratulations. People tried to make the claim that I'm biased against British fighters. Right? In essence, I'm trying to rewage the War of 1812. Right? Now, we'll overlook the fact that I'm picking Billy Joe Saunders to beat Canelo. Right? That I've picked British fighters in the past. What really struck me, though, in the comments to the Okoli video is just how many of you, and it's an underreported story, quite frankly, are fiercely loyal to Anthony Joshua. And that loyalty springs from your belief that Anthony Joshua is the best heavyweight in recent memory. Right? The feeling is that Anthony Joshua, after knocking down Andy Ruiz, got a little bit careless, got a little bit sloppy, ends up getting stopped himself. There's a story attached to it where he was supposed to be fighting someone else. Andy Ruiz was a last minute replacement. He didn't really know Ruiz that well. He wasn't as prepared as he should have been. He was on his way to a victory when um, Ruiz gets off the canvas and then stunned him. Right? Um, I got to tell you, folks, I do believe there is a heavyweight out there who's the best heavyweight of several years. Right? Several years. I view this heavyweight as being better than Vladimir Klitschko. Right? This, this heavyweight's from the United Kingdom. To the Anthony Joshua crowd, let me just say, you're right that there is such a heavyweight out there from the United Kingdom. You're just picking the wrong guy. That guy's Tyson Fury. Understand, in terms of great heavyweights, let's say... In recent memory, I'd say there's Lennox Lewis. For me personally, I'm also going to put Vitaly Klitschko on the gold medal stand. Right? In terms of the last, oh, two decades in heavyweight boxing. The other guy is Tyson Fury. In other words... As much as I've liked some of the other recent heavyweights, those guys are the gold standard. I know the Anthony Joshua crowd feels that there seems to be a conspiracy out there. That we're overlooking AJ's obvious brilliance. The 100% KO ratio at the start of his career. Right, The fact that his opposition has been a bit overlooked because he did face Joseph Parker when Joseph Parker was champion in a unification match. He's already stopped Alexander Povetkin. He's already beaten Dylan White. 
right? The argument is, how could a guy go through the heavyweight division and beat big names like that? Understand Parker, Dylan White, Prevekin, they're still viewed as top contenders. How could a guy do all that as well as beat Dominique Brazil? And, of course, former heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko and not be viewed more highly. Are we going to remember him for his worst night? And, of course, the argument goes, Tyson Fury's had some bad nights. Right? John McDermott, that first fight. Wasn't that Tyson Fury on the canvas against a cruiserweight, Steve Cunningham? Wasn't that Tyson Fury bleeding against Otto Wallen? Why does Tyson Fury still have a belt when the referee clearly should have stopped that fight on cuts? Well, let me just say, a former heavyweight champion and unified cruiserweight champion, who I respect dearly, I thought this guy was one of the harder punchers, pound for pound, I've ever seen. David Hay, right, has a take on this fight. He feels that Tyson Fury cannot use the strategy that he used to puncture Deontay Wilder's unbeaten streak. The idea that Fury could come out, start fast, Throw a lot of straight right hands, a lot of power shots, back up Anthony Joshua into a corner. Work him over, destroy him, knock him down, right? Have the guy bleeding out of an ear. Beat him up so bad that after the fight, the opponent starts talking about how he may have been drugged by his own corner. How his costume was too heavy. That's why he had no legs that early. Right? David Hay claims that if Tyson Fury tries to pull off that same strategy, he gets smoked. My word. Not Hay's word. He gets beaten. Perhaps KO'd. By Anthony Joshua. Right? David Hay feels that if... Tyson Fury brings the fight to Joshua early. Joshua's going to have clean shots right down the middle. Could end the fight. Right now, I understand that view's out there. Right? I'll concede. I'll concede here that Anthony Joshua is a gifted puncher with both hands, probably hits harder than Tyson Fury. But understand, I'm in the other camp. Right? I've watched both fighters for years. I see nothing stopping Tyson Fury from fighting exactly the same fight that he fought against Deontay Wilder and completely putting to bed the question of who's better, Joshua or Wilder? Right? I believe the answer to that question has always been Tyson Fury. Right? Well, just to understand, I'm not alone. I know with my subscribers here, with people who come across my page from time to time, we have a familiarity. Right? I know when I see some of your names in the comment section, I know what the take's going to be. I understand people like to treat me as someone who's extremely unfair to Anthony Joshua, right? For the record, you know, my allegiance isn't to any fighter. I'm just a better trying to make profitable propositions on fights. If I thought Joshua had Fury's game, and if I thought Fury had Joshua's game, I'd be taking Joshua. Right? Understand, it's, you know, I don't care where a fighter comes from. I really don't. You know, I'm going to pick the guy who I think's more skilled. And here, there's a gap. Right? Let me just 
call out a couple guys here. Now, I've mentioned one heavyweight champion, David Hay. Right? Let me mention another, George Foreman. Now, George Foreman used to analyze fights for HBO. I find George Foreman to be one of the better boxing analysts out there in terms of looking at fighters and telling you who he thinks is going to win. Right? Understand, too, George Foreman himself, fearsome puncher. It's not like he's biased against punchers. Right? He himself was a fearsome puncher. Well, George Foreman gave an interview to Talk Sport. And here's the quote. Foreman said that he, and I'm going to quote Foreman here, just cannot see. Let me repeat that. Just cannot see. Anthony Joshua beating Tyson Fury. Just can't see it. Right? Nor can I, quite frankly. Although I'm going to hedge my play because a hedge is the right thing to do. Teddy Atlas, who used to train Mike Tyson. In other words, this guy's been around punchers. Right? He was in the other corner. The Michael Moore corner, when George Foreman regained the heavyweight title. Teddy Atlas also has been the trainer for Alexander Povetkin in the past. Not now, but in the past. In other words, Teddy's been around heavyweights, as well as other fighters. But understand, Teddy has been around elite heavyweights. Well, let me just point out, Teddy Atlas has said, you know, Fury could win this by KO. Not Joshua, Fury. So I need to have people understand that there's a side of the street that I know many AJ people aren't aware exists. They think it's some kind of political statement. When people say, you know, I'm going to take the guy fighting AJ. Right? They think that's some kind of political statement. They think that some kind of agenda is attached to that. To throw sand on AJ's legacy. Right? AJ has beaten every man he's fought. Right? He avenged the Andy Ruiz loss. And he did so by a wide margin. Okay. Okay, I get it. But here's what I want people to consider. Let's just look at tempo and styles, right? Otto Wallen, who gave a spirited fight to Tyson Fury. And that's a recent fight, especially in this pandemic era where most fighters were out of the ring during COVID, right? Otto Wallen is on record as saying AJ has all the tools all the tools to beat Tyson Fury. He just has to believe in himself more. Now, what I want people to consider is the fact that when it comes to belief, confidence, nobody ever says that about Tyson Fury. You notice that? We don't sit around and say, you know, if, if Tyson Fury just believed in himself a little more, maybe he'd be unbeaten, which, by the way, he is. Right? We know not to say that. This is a guy who, his third fight back after a huge layoff, being out of boxing, he goes the distance with Deontay Wilder. Should have won that fight, quite frankly, on the judges' scorecards. Right? Gets knocked down in the 12th round hard. By his own admission, is out cold for a couple of seconds. Gets off the canvas. Quite frankly, wins the rest of the round. Now understand, the reason, in my opinion, and I'm speculating, let's be up front. The reason Otto Wallen is saying if AJ believes in himself more, right? if AJ believes in himself more, is because 
for people on my side of the street, the side that thinks that Fury should win this fight by knockout. Right? We've seen AJ fights that, quite frankly, have curious moments. Curious moments. Now, let's say Tyson Fury starts fast. Let's say Tyson Fury fights the fight he did against Deontay Wilder. Right now, David Hay seems to think that AJ is going to have no questions whatsoever about his stamina. That if Tyson Fury takes the car out the driveway and is going 100 miles an hour, AJ is going to be there to match him. This is Hagler Hearns, right? Because understand, Tyson Fury started against Deontay Wilder at breathtaking speed. You knew early in the Excuse me, you knew early in that fight. Oh, Tyson Fury's trying to end this. Right? There wasn't a lot of back foot dancing and, oh, I'm going to win this on the judges' scorecards. No, you, you understood. Tyson Fury was trying to disintermediate the judges. He was there to test Deontay Wilder. He was there to get Wilder on his back foot. The first round's interesting, too, because Wilder has a persona. It's the persona that an unbeaten heavyweight champion for five years has. You notice that Wilder's out there, and Wilder's fainting. Wilder's trying to say, hey, I got this right hand here. Got this bazooka here. I can hurt you with this. Be careful now. Tread lightly now. And Fury's not buying it. Right? Fury just basically comes out as like, hey, look, you know, you don't have the skill level to hang with me. This, this is no longer my third fight back. I've shaken off the rust. You know, I've been in the ring with better. I'll deal with your right hand the same way I dealt with Vladimir Klitschko's right hand. When Klitschko was champion. How did that right hand hurt Tyson Fury? Do you even remember as you watch this video whether Vladimir Klitschko threw the right hand? So now we get to Anthony Joshua. I know Joshua when he was coming up, when he was fighting club fighters, had a lot of early KOs. No question about it. But you know he's not a hunter. Right? You know he's not the fighter who places you on the clock. There's not going to be a Hagler Hearns round early in Anthony Joshua's career. He's neither of those guys. He's not there looking at you thinking victim. Ten seconds into the fight. That's not who he is. Right, folks, you don't become that years into your heavyweight reign. Now, I know I have hardcore boxing fans watching my YouTube videos. If you disagree and you want to point out that there's some fighters who suddenly became hyper-aggressive deep in their career, okay, great, mention that. Right? What I've seen are guys who are hunters, you know who they are. Right? You understand some guys are going to come find you. I've noticed you have some guys who are hunters who, after they knock you down, they take it easy on you. Manny Pacquiao, for example. But make no mistake. Manny's not there to look at you for three rounds. No, the first three rounds, he's going to come after you. You know he's going to throw some big left hands just to see if you can take it. Right now, we're in an era where guys have a lot of first-round KOs, a lot of early KOs, but they're not hunters. Right? Deontay Wilder's not a hunter. 
right? Just not a hunter. George Foreman was a hunter. Anthony Joshua, if Tyson Fury takes the car out the garage and is driving 100 miles an hour, if Tyson Fury wants an epic Hearns Hagler first round, Anthony Joshua is going to be on his back foot. He's going to be thinking stamina. He's going to be thinking about how much can I actually spend here without endangering the later rounds. He'll be thinking about the later rounds. How do we know this? Folks, in a fight I was wrong on. I did expect Kubrat Pulev to beat Anthony Joshua. I know that sounds crazy. Well, in a fight I was wrong on, Kubrat Pulev was there practically on life support. Right? He'd been knocked down. He's turning his back. He looked awful. Awful. Simple question. Do you feel that Kubrat Pulev would have lasted two more rounds with a Joe Fraser in there? Smoking Joe. That's what we called him. Smoking Joe. You think Kubrat Pulev would have lasted two more rounds with a George Foreman? Folks, you know it wouldn't have happened. You know, for him to survive another two rounds, he would have had to have been through hell. Hell. Well, let me just tell you. Against Anthony Joshua, a guy let him off the hook. And it wasn't the referee. It was Anthony Joshua. You need to think about that. As Joshua fights Tyson Fury. I know you look at the guys. And I know. One guy looks flabby, right? He'll always look flabby. Let's be real here. Even when he has lost a lot of weight, he looks a little flabby. One guy looks flabby. The other guy looks like he's in a bodybuilding contest. Right? With Anthony Joshua, you're seeing abs. With Anthony Joshua, you never see any body fat. This is an Evanda Holyfield type fighter. I've never seen Anthony Joshua out of shape. I don't think I'll ever see Anthony Joshua out of shape, right? His role model seems to be Vladimir Klitschko, who calls him little brother, right? Forget the looks, folks. The better athlete is Tyson Fury. You understand that just by looking at Fury's feet. You understood that just by looking at Fury dance circles around Deontay Wilder. Literally, just dancing circles around him. And being able to do so. He does tire later. In his third fight back, he's dropped in the ninth round. Right? Blows through the first eight rounds against an unbeaten fighter, doesn't he? Then he's dropped in the twelfth round. I don't think he makes that mistake again. Would have won the fight by two rounds if all he did was stick a jab and move the 12th round. Look at when he gets knocked down. His hands are low. But just understand, the movement Tyson Fury did against Deontay Wilder, much more ring coverage than Andy Ruiz is greater than, I would argue, the movement AJ did in any of his fights. Right? The Andy Ruiz rematch is about as much as I've seen AJ move in a fight. But understand, Ruiz, who has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division, has some of the slowest feet in the heavyweight division. Right? Now, maybe Canelo's trainer is working with him on that. There are ways you can get around that. But that night against AJ, Andy was barely moving. Andy came in the ring 
out of shape by even Andy Ruiz standards. Well, my point to you is simply this. Just to understand the side of the street I'm on. Fury's the better athlete. I don't care how they look. I'm not giving out medals for muscles. Fury's the better athlete. If Fury comes out and decides to raise room temperature one minute into the fight, right? We'll, we'll give him a minute to get started. Let's face it. Hagler Hurts <laughs> is an outlier, right? You don't get that every, every day where the guys are winging it and it's like 20 seconds into the fight. Let's say a minute into the fight, Tyson Fury decides, okay, I'm going to raise room temperature. Right? If he brings the fight to Anthony Joshua, let's remember what he did to Wilder. He does not get deep in the pocket. He's outside. He's throwing straight right hands. He's throwing a jab. When Wilder, who has ring coverage, just ask Audley Harrison, when Wilder tries to get closer to him, he sticks a hand up to maintain distance, but yet he's still being hyper-aggressive. Now, are you sure that if he starts with that kind of pace, Joshua's game plan is going to be to fire back? Are you sure that if he gets Joshua on his back foot, we know Fury's fluent. I'm using language here as an analogy, right? I always get critiqued on grammar here, fine. If Fury, put it this way, we know Fury's fluent on his back foot. If Joshua comes forward, Fury will gladly go backwards. Fury can win rounds on his back foot. Do you know that? about Anthony Joshua, right? Floyd Mayweather met with Joshua, suggested that Joshua come to the Mayweather gym to work on his defense. Joshua's defense degrades if you force him onto his back foot, doesn't it? Well, here, unlike Andy Ruiz, who's in the pocket, Tyson Fury has reach. He's taller than Joshua, folks. He has reach that can keep him outside of the pocket. Right? Outside of the pocket. So I believe that Fury can fight exactly the way he did against Wilder. He has a guy who is afraid to empty the tank. Right? Joshua understands that he has stamina problems. He remembers the round after he decks Vladimir Klitschko. Right? He decks Klitschko. Great left hooks. Look at the film of that round. The next round, Klitschko decks him. When he gets up, he has nothing. He's covering up over by the side of the rope. Now, you could get away with that against Vladimir Klitschko. You cannot against Tyson Fury. Fury, first and foremost, is a showman. You go cover up on the side of the rope, Fury's going to embarrass you. Right? He's going to be looking at you. He's going to come over. He's going to be throwing punches. Fury's also going to know that he can go 12 rounds. Joshua, who I know, went 12 rounds against Joseph Parker. Right? Look at how the pacing of that fight was determined by the referee, who would not let them fight inside. Right? But Joshua today, and I know he goes 12 rounds against Andy Ruiz in the rematch, does not know if he could go 12 rounds in a spirited fight. Doesn't know. So, Kubrat Pulev gets off the canvas, is barely conscious, is in the middle of being blown out. Joshua takes his foot off the gas. 
Imagine the Hagler Hearns first round. If Marvin Hagler and Hitman come out, they're trading, then Thomas Hearns thinks to himself, you know what? I folded in the 14th round against Ray Leonard. I got to pace myself. Marvin, who's doing one of history's best jobs cutting off the ring. Revisit that round. Look at how Marvin has Hearns, who's throwing punches, backing up against the ropes. Right, folks? If Tyson Fury channels Marvin Hagler, he'll find out he's not fighting Thomas Hearns. He's fighting a boxer who knows he has to pace himself. Early in a fight, AJ has a great left hook. It's actually one of the sport's best left hooks. It's a great left hook. AJ has a great straight right hand. Right? You might remember that right hand. Gets him the title against Charles Martin. Right? AJ has a great right hand. Straight. But understand, AJ doesn't have the body attack. AJ doesn't have the other punches until his opponent tires. I've noticed that AJ is great when his opponent is hurt. They had a really low over-under when he fought Dominic Brazil. Really low over-under. And... We cashed that night. Brazil hit the over, believe it or not, in that short fight. And I noticed Brazil was fighting two fighters. AJ is extremely cautious early. But when Brazil is dazed and confused, then you notice a different opponent. This is why AJ is a closer. Then you notice that AJ moved differently. Literally, he's a different guy in the ring. You're watching the fight, you're saying, where was this guy? Finishes Brazil. Then you realize, then you realize that AJ has such a stamina problem that he can't show you his skills until the other guy is hurt. Well, I'm just telling you, that works against everyday fighters, club fighters, marginal contenders, guys caught up in their own construct who can't really make changes mid-round. Folks, he's fighting one of the best heavyweights I've come across. Understand. Tyson Fury beat Vladimir Klitschko years ago. Had he not had problems, had he not been out of the ring, his reign would have been in excess of five years by now. Right as it is, he's still the most skilled heavyweight out there. Right, so I'm going to disagree with David Hay. And I think David Hay is a great boxing analyst, quite frankly. I know Hay helped Derek Chisora give a real spirited fight against Alexander Usyk. Right? Hay's a boxing man. No question about it. But I'm going to disagree with him. I think if Tyson Fury raises room temperature early, he's going to be dealing with an opponent who can't really raise room temperature that much. Because if he does, he'll run out of gas by the end of the sixth round. So AJ's going to be pacing himself. The first three rounds of the fight are there on the table for Tyson Fury. I believe Fury should use them to deplete AJ. Get him on his back foot where he's uncertain. Start to throw straight right hands. Work him over. Don't stay in the pocket. Make the pocket a mobile pocket. That's what Tyson Fury does. Right? Work him over. But get him on his back foot. 
if he comes after you on his front foot early, you know the guy doesn't have the stamina to go 12 rounds like that. You know that. So that's when you box him on your back foot like you did against Wilder the first fight. Knowing that after this guy finishes pushing it, after the first three rounds, he's yours. So, I know the Joshua crowd cannot understand why their guy isn't getting more love. Right? I get it. And let me say, some of his KOs have been spectacular. The Anthony Joshua, who, after he hurts Povetkin, goes in for the kill, is a great heavyweight. But understand, he couldn't do that from the beginning of the opening bell. He doesn't have the stamina to do that. There's a reason why an auto violent says if AJ believes in himself more. You know from watching his fights, he doesn't believe enough in himself to finish an injured Kubrat Pulev early in the fight with an AJ crowd. Right? If he's a guy who's going to take his foot off the gas and let a guy linger, then he's asking for trouble. Right? Well, folks, he's going to have to take his foot off the gas if Tyson Fury decides he's going to repeat his Deontay Wilder performance. Right? If Fury comes in and applies a lot of pressure early, Fury's going to find that he's not fighting Steve Cunningham. A guy with fast hands who's going to say, all right, let's go. You know, you're here coming after me. Okay, I'm here. I'll be your huckleberry. That's not Joshua. George Foreman knows it. Teddy Atlas knows it. I feel I know it. Right? Tyson Fury, if he's too cautious, will get himself in trouble because Joshua has that Jedi mind trick going that Canelo has, right? That Deontay Wilder has, where judges see around it's 60 40 in favor of the opponent and they say, I'm giving it to Canelo, right? I'm, I'm giving that round to Manny Pacquiao. Right, so Fury knows in the UK he's not the fan favorite. He knows that. So I think he needs to start fast. He needs to show us. This guy doesn't have my hand speed. He doesn't have my dexterity. He doesn't have my level of coordination. He doesn't have my stamina. I'm two-handed. I can fight different angles. I'm the better fighter outside. I'm the better fighter inside. I'm going to force this guy onto his back foot. And while I'm being aggressive, I'm going to prevent him from bending close enough to me to hurt me. Right? That should be the attitude. That should be the attitude. Tyson Fury brings in the ring. And if he does, let me agree with George Foreman. I just cannot see. I just cannot see Anthony Joshua winning the fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you to the Joshua Nation. I know it's underreported. I recognize you're one of boxing's most loyal communities. I understand you have no doubt about your fighter, no doubt about his greatness, right? But let me just say, we're here dealing with the top of the game, right? Joshua can be championship level. 
The question here is whether he's fury level. I don't think he is. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.